again and welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick, and I possibly have lipstick on my teeth, do I? A little tiny bit, but it's fine. It's like uh, minuscule. Man, right. it's been my story all week. I don't know what. My story up. is I feel like I just got my hair cut and I had a I hate I hate booking ahead for haircuts. Okay. okay. This is all my personal crap that nobody needs to book. I don't like to schedule out. Because right. I never really know where my hair is gonna be. Hmm. Right? Like sometimes it grows longer than normal and you're like, I really like this. And had I scheduled a haircut a month out. So then I started thinking, I'm like, okay, this, I can't. I don't know what I, 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 I just can't. I'm at that day. And that's what usually happens to me. Like, okay, today oh, we're done now. So I started to schedule and I was like, well, I'll do it next Friday. Cause I don't want to deal with this. Cause we're going camping. And then I started thinking, oh, but I'm probably going to want a haircut about the 20th, 19th of June. Cause I'm going camping. Right. So then I was like, oh, but if I wait, Till next week, then I'm only like three weeks. That seems silly. So I it must I must have booked seven different appointments on the app, and I was just like, I'm so sorry. So I'm going to get my hair cut so that I can get it cut again in June. You know, I you know I mean I just obviously don't. it's I, just I, I have a know. regular thing going on, and I'm trying to get down to. I think we used to be eight weeks, and we mm. were like uh, seven, yeah. six, and five. I mean, honestly, yep. I, I should just cut it once a month, so it's always well, regularly the same. Well, that's kind of where I same. am. I can go anywhere from like four to six weeks. It depends. And I had her. I purposely didn't get it cut shorter, shorter um, last time, because it wasn't really warm. You know, like it wasn't really summer yet. Yeah. And then I'm like, I don't know what I was thinking. So apparently, I uh, wasn't thinking. Chrissy Cantor, who yes. won her election yes, yesterday, sure yes, was I, I only met her yesterday <laughs> before I like dropped in yeah. to go help uh, lit drop. But yeah. she was like, I don't know you, but I, I love, love your yeah, hair, your riot. whole look. And um, I was like, I like you already, lady. Yeah, it was good. So <laughs> you, were the, you were the second half of our team. Uh, the, in the morning, Victoria Sullivan and Brittany Ping and myself went out and did like two thirds of the list. So it worked out well. Um, Brittany had me. Everybody had meetings. Oh yeah, we and were. And then you had meeting. Like so, I said to Brittany, "Just go grab Carla and finish it." Yes. I mean, it was. It was just. So, so the good news was, so basically what we were doing for folks back home is we generate a list and then you go to people who are regular voters yep. who might have forgotten because it's a special election. So no one's waking up on, you know, random yesterday, Tuesday going, Jay, I should go vote for something, right? right? So these were literally door hangers. There were a lot of people in their yards. Yep. So we got to talk to people as well. My plantar fasciitis, which I got when I was door knocking in 2018 for yeah. my own race, kind of made a little barking dog yeah, yeah. comeback. Uh, but I have my comfy old lady shoes on. Yeah, so I was, um, hopefully Dan, that'll help. I was chuckling because um, Victoria didn't have her phone on her the whole time, but she did 1.3 miles when she did have her phone on. Oh, in wow. Her, right, some of the driveways were Oh, really long. man. So, so we did all of them except one house. Yep. We drove by, and the driveway was literally, we couldn't even see, see the house. end of it. Yeah, I couldn't like, even see the end of the driveway. Yeah. It was like half a mile up, and I just looked at no. Britt, and I was like, nah, no, I'm not doing that no, one. No, um, so I chuckled. So Dan says to me last night, I said something about um, doing things. And he goes, well, yeah. He goes, and you you did a lot of walking. And I go, yeah, I did three doors. <laughs> I was, the drive, I was driving. I would drive and drop Brittany off and then drive and drop, you know, and then turn around and pick them back up. We, uh, so. we, we, uh, she drove and then somewhere like we got turned around and I saw she was far down the street. So I was like, oh, I'm going to grab the car and go pick her up. But, you know, it's not my car. And, uh, and so anyway, so I had put the cars, it, her car doesn't have a D. Uh -oh. for drive so i was like oh i think this right. is the gear and then but then i actually put it in manual so when i pulled away like i was like Rrm! and uh she was like how yeah, about i drive we had a little walk? issue at the, when we when we were done we went back to the polls and just overreaction on the part of uh, maxine mosley's part so i pulled up in my truck and i don't have a key we don't have a key it's just a button right and the key's in my purse which is on me and i had to go to the bathroom so I go in the, you know, straight to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm in the bathroom and I hear honk, honk, honk. And I'm like, 
that seems awfully close. And I'm like, oh, that's got to be my truck, right? <laughs> so I come out and apparently what had happened is Victoria was waiting in the truck, but then all these people were like waving to her. So she got out of the truck. And as uh, soon as she opened the door, my truck thought somebody was breaking in. Uh, and the alarm went Oh, off. it was the alarm. But the I got reaction you. was Maxine Mosley screaming bloody murder at Victoria because the horn was going off. I mean, it was just totally overreaction. So uh, so she won quite handily, 100, 146 right? 146 votes uh, more. I mean, it was like 58 to 42 or something? 56 Six something. To it, was, it, it was I good. Um, Math in my head. <laughs> I mean, a couple takeaways. She obviously has a wide reach of her own because she owns a business and she's lived there, you know, longer. She owns Bliss on Hanover Street, right? Um, Is that the name of it? It's, chill. It's chill Spot. Chill. Sorry. Chill Spot. That's why I got confused because when I asked her, I was like, oh, is your thing in Bedford? But I conflated yep. the names Bliss and or Chill, you know, all the same to So me. she had that reach, which... And she's just personable. And I think people highly disliked Maxine because so she's like kind of like a union. A former union head. And she's just ornery. And even like there are teachers that came out to vote and said, yeah, I would never vote for her. You know, just no. Ornery, um, that's a good word. So that'll be good. That means, you know, we maintained our whopping three three seats <laughs> on the board of mayor and aldermen. Um, yeah. It was, it was, um. Well, I, mean, I, I, I feel you know, like everybody it's wants a... to make it into like some landslide. And I, 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 there's a lot of factors, I think, that go into it. I do think that people are pretty fed up. Um, after spending my morning in the neighborhoods we were in, uh, we were joking amongst ourselves that like, OK, this is a completely different city than the rest than we live in. So, uh, you know, Did that, you feel that way? Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, I was in parts of Ward 6 where I, I was in I, parts of Manchester where, candidly, I, I... I didn't know where I was pointed. Like, I was like, I actually... Because it's no weird. Way. Because, like, like I'll be like, but weren't we, we just, just on... Yeah. And then you're like... And but, I literally, when, like, got to Bodwell Road, I'm like, do I have to turn right or left? I really have yeah. no idea where I, I mean, I it am. really is charming out that way. And it does feel a little bit more like a different... It feels like a Connecticut well, neighborhood or something, I was just going to say, so, like, when, there's city, when we're having citywide elections or anything, and you wonder sometimes, like... Why aren't people as frustrated? Right. But I think depending on where you live in the city, you, you're faced with different things and everybody just assumes that the North End is different. And they are different in their own realm. But it, Well, but this Ward 6 this felt was quite kind different. of different as well. I mean, you know, uh, unless you're coming down to Elm Street or right. now, you know, with the, the, the sort of forced exodus of the problem to the West Side, which, which we I, are not no, going to stand for, So folks. I'm not gonna elaborate. But I do believe that somebody bought that building. The the the, uh, the Elks, Elks building. building. Just saying. That's, That's convenient. What I, heard. <laughs> I heard that somebody bought the building. You know, remember back, remember back in when um, I don't know. If I, I meant to look it up, but I forgot. Um, maybe a year or two ago, um, Ben Gamash, there was they were going to put some sort of treatment center or a needle exchange or something in one of the buildings that's around the Pearl Street mm. lot. Do you remember? And Ben Gamash owned the building next to it. And he was like, this is good. Who, what, my, this must have been before COVID because he was like, my tenant, my businesses don't, don't want, want to that. be next to that. Yeah. So he just bought up that building. Nice. Because the way to avoid having so, neighbors you dislike is to buy so, the property. So, so, uh, I've also wondered, and, and I mean, this would be a, actually, I haven't wondered. I'm just trying to find a cool segue into talking about zoning. I was going to yep. say, I wonder oh, if yeah, we no. could fix some of these problems with zoning, but like, I'm not really pro more government intervention. Mm -hmm. So I did go to that yes. New Hampshire zoning atlas. So guys, if you're a nerd, like we well, are. I haven't dug in too deep, but I was like, oh, this is quite handy. And like and, and you like data. And uh, so basically, if you go, I think it's NH you can Google zoning, it. NH zoning Atlas. Atlas. You can, org. Yeah. And it's this interactive tool that summarizes the entire state of New Hampshire's yeah. zoning laws, regulations. It's very robust. You can like put in an address. You yeah. can click on a little yeah. just spot. You can compare different districts, different municipalities. Turns out, which I did not know, and it was very interesting to see sort of the different takeaways with that. There are 26 municipalities i don't know what you call what that technical term political is political subdivisions uh that are uh entirely unzoned 
I always just thought Completely it was Grafton unzoned. and I and, and I always knew there were two. Right. But according to this, there are like 26, I think, didn't was the that. number. And it was so interesting because there were uh, they had uh, so everyone who was involved with yep. the project sort of talked about their parts, how it works, and everything. And this was over at St. Yep. A's. And then they concluded with a panel discussion that had someone from Municipal, um, uh, Dick Ag Agnost. Yep. Uh, so, you know, a developer, a large scale developer who actually does benefit from zoning, right? Because one of sure. the reactions he had, which was interesting, is he said when they showed their staffers yeah. this atlas, they freaked out. Like one of the his head manager came into the office and he's like, well, we're done now. It's over. And I was like, oh, that's a strange reaction. <laughs> but then he explained that um, they had developed a lot of these tools in house. Yeah over the years as a uh, competitive market. Now they don't have the- Right, right. now everyone's got equal right. access, equity, to uh, to the information. Uh, but then he said, oh, you know, we talked about it and we see that, you know, this can be a right. benefit. But it was funny because like uh, my immediate reaction was, what can we build in those 26 Well, it's interesting because I did, I did, I, I didn't have much time to look at it. I, I always run out of time, and I don't know how that's possible, but um, I'm going to blame Alex. There's an infinite right. amount, or a finite, a finite so, a amount. A finite amount of time, and yeah, allergies <laughs> slightly to me all the time. Um, but I did click on a few towns just to, out of curiosity what like their building constraints were, and a lot of the places that I clicked had a two-acre two minimum, and I'm going to have to read more because then it would say, optimum lot size and so there's a there's, there's this some range. variances like yeah. they want two acres but they'll let it so but then so then it was interesting because i was like well that's hard because like if you're looking for a, to move someplace um not every place had i mean there might not maybe this is where the variance comes in there might not be two acre lots left right so i mean there are a lot of challenges and i think this tool is actually going to help everyone sort of figure out, right? Because I think uh, uh, the, the homelessness problem, yeah. affordable housing problem, these are things that actually all of us agree that there's a problem. Now, of course, you know, and I did <laughs> say this to a few people yesterday, well, if you'd listen to the libertarians right. you know, 50 years right. ago, we wouldn't have this problem well, right the, now. And the but solution of course, usually isn't is with the government, which right. I, I filled in for Brittany on their show this morning with Victoria and like she said, we're talking about the homeless and providing services. She goes, but I don't want the government involved. I don't want the city managing this because they, they don't do it well at all. And the services never get delivered. Well, or, or they get delivered and then they create an actual market right. where you're like actually making more of the thing you claim you're trying to solve. But so a few interesting things that I did learn about, uh, so, it's easier in New Hampshire currently to build a five unit than a duplex, which, which is seems weird. crazy. Um, apparently years and years ago, one of the things that specifically happened in Manchester was if you had two parcels next to each yes. other, so you were a homeowner on one and you had a free yes. lot on the other one, instead of it being two different earths or two different yeah. parcels, they actually consolidated yes. them. So that, uh, this is a point that Dick actually made, is he was like, that actually created a problem because in the past you would have been able to build no, a second can't. unit on the other uh, parcel of right. land, but now you can no longer do that. So they, they actually took, and I forget if he said a hundred or a thousand, and, and if you think about but it, it a significant wasn't, amount it wasn't of properties. It was probably done for that intention. It was just probably done. No, so, it was like someone know, else doing, trying to solve some other right, problem, but then to, causing knockdown. Right, we don't need to have these two parcels owned by the same person next to each other. I mean, there was probably a property tax reason. There was probably so, a seemingly good reason at the yeah, time that just is up, now not a great. Cleaned up the books and yeah. now you're like, yes, but now I can't build a house right. there. Right. So so I thought that was interesting. And then, you know, it, I mean, the municipality lady, <laughs> the lady from municipal was like, the solution is more government. Yeah, no. And I felt like at least 80 percent of the room You're was like, like no, I don't really think no so. we kind of see that that's what that was. But it does seem like this at least is going to be a tool to allow us to start to look at some of these challenges and at least understand because it's so nuanced and it's so different mm -hmm. from district to district. Yeah. And, and it's kind of, it's almost crazy because well, it's it, like, if you're a developer, you, you, you're, like, you're like, oh. Well, and to do like that, I, the bit I did read is that it cost like $100,000 was, a, there must've been a grant to do this. 
And the endless hours, I forget, there were like 40 people involved yeah. because they had to read through like 32,000 mm -hmm. pieces of regulation because if every town's got a different set of rules. Right. So if you're trying, if you are a developer or even just a person who wants to build a home. Right. You, you start out and you're like, okay, so we're going to do this, 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 and this. And then you're like, oh, but, I, oh, I can't. Right. Okay, so I'll go. And then it that's just, you know, who's got time for that? Right. And then uh, another, um, just whatever yeah. is like stuck in my brain. Um, the other number I heard was it costs four dollars and sixty cents per square foot to maintain, like your your road frontage. I didn't quite understand the nuance, so we're just in la la land well, now. Yeah. But 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 there's like something to do with like you could either have X or you have two hundred square 200, feet of two hundred road, road frontage seemed to be a common right, and so that. Uh, I, uh, one of the points from one of the developers was like, but they don't understand by making that the minimum or uh, right. uh, something. They're like, there's a cost involved in that that shouldn't necessarily be there because for some properties you should be able to do it a different mm -hmm. way. I wasn't quite sure what the nuance was, but yeah, I was like, mm, okay, this was kind of a Neat. good nerdy morning. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it is a good tool. It makes me think of, so Dan and I looked went on a tour of a company uh, yeah, the and, Keen, and I can't for the life of me think of its name. Unity, Unity Homes, and they had a very it just is that like me, modular homes? They or? build walls. They don't build it. Don't, don't well, <laughs> who don't, will build the walls? But it was these um, people. <laughs> prefab versus modular. They kept okay. them because like modular is boxes. Yep. Think of that. You, they build different modules and put it together. Prefab is you're building the walls and then assembling them into a home. Oh yeah, so, okay. So it's a little bit different, mm -hmm. but they do, they have tons of YouTube videos out there and they give away, they have tours of the, because they said they're not worried about sharing the technology that they've determined. Like they will tell you how they build their wall because they look at it from the perspective that it benefits, it, they don't care if it benefits. It's kind of like open source software. Right. It's like at some point you have to real, it, you realize that this is actually a benefit for a wider range than just myself. So, right. I mean, the reaction with Anagnos people might have been, oh, because we thought of it. But then really, if all developers can develop easier, if home builders can navigate the system easier, it actually should bring the cost out of my brand down, you know, a minuscule amount, but it still does. Right. I mean, it's also interesting with these large developers, of course, have sort of almost a monopoly advantage because, um, and this is more for folks back home, but one of the things that happens is if you're over-regulated mm -hmm. in a market is you, you actually, you start to support big business in a way that you may not actually yeah. want to do because what happens is... If I'm like a little startup, but I have to compete against Microsoft, Microsoft has a team of 500 lawyers right. and they're spending a budget of a billion dollars on legal fees. I'm some little yeah. here, but now I'm trying to do something in this space. Yeah. And because I also have to comply with these very hard regulations, you're making the barrier to entry yes. for the little guy too hard mm -hmm. to ever get there. So also when we talk about, you know, big gov, big business, everyone being too big, if you do care about startups and little businesses and at home stuff and artisanal stuff and all of that, you should agree with us because we're actually trying to help the people who have an idea and have a dream and want to implement it yep. to, to be able to do that. And when we say government's too big, that's what I mean is you, you're you actually forcing people out of the market. So right. someone like Dick or one of those bigger construction companies, they can way more easily do the developments than right. if I start like a, hey, me and my four buddies are going to start a little, you, you want to build a house, an apartment A modular complex. home right. or, you know, yeah. like something, I mean, it's right? kind of, I was kind of perplexed surprised when we were looking at the, at this Unity Homes thing, which it wasn't really good product. I mean, there were things about it, like they have these amazing European or whatever style windows that Dan was like, oh, those are awesome. And I was like, yeah, those suck. You know, like, oh. well, they are. I was just like, I don't want those in my house because they open like this in. Ah, uh, okay. And so it makes sense for airflow and all right. this stuff. And I was like, but what if I want to open the window? Like, I want the window. And Dan would just as soon live in air conditioning all year, right. right? So I was like, no. So they open also like this, but they're not meant to open. That's for cleaning. So it just was like, uh-uh. And then we went and looked, 
I mean, it was fascinating because all of their lumber was like 32 feet long. And it was it was really, really fascinating the way they build these. Um, so can you kind of go and be like, um, I'm interested in a two bedroom well, and they, they have, can show yes. you blueprints so they, for the, it? You or... can look right on their website. They have like, say, six standards. Okay. And they have floor plans. But they will, what was neat about them, which I was intrigued by, is they have staff that will... I mean, you end up, obviously, you must have to pay something. Um, they will change it okay. within reason because, right. obviously, they have to build this yep. building. Um, so it wasn't just this model versus that model. Obviously, if you pick the regular model, it's probably less expensive to build because it's already in the manufacturing. And then they actually, then they, you order it and they bring it to your site? They, they, you do the prep work. So you do a foundation or whatever. Most of their homes were on slab foundations, which, again, wasn't something that I... Because I'm looking at it from a completely, they're right. looking at it as efficiency. Yep. Right? And I'm looking at it like aesthetics. I want to live there. I, mine was all about aesthetics. <laughs> I could care less how efficient it was. Um, but once the foundation's there, they literally, your house shows up in panel in like three days. It's not finished on the inside or the outside, but it's it's oh, there. Wow. And so it's like, boof, it's there. Um, now Do you I, know if you can build on stilts? I don't know. Interesting, Probably. because that was one thing. I watched some show where they were putting in houses in these crazy parts of Alaska, right? Because huh. as we change uh, with the tech we have now, with drone technology and Starlink yeah. and that kind of stuff. People are moving more You remote. can start to move to like really yeah. remote areas and just be like, yeah, I'll have my toilet paper airdrop, right? right? And so these were guys up in Alaska, uh, um, just, uh, you know, with these crazy mm. sites. And then they would build like steel stilts. And then I, I forget like how there's got to be something that's yeah. the bottom part, yeah. right? But I was like, oh, that's so cool because you can actually adjust depending on the terrain, right? Huh. Your poles yeah. can be different heights yeah. in order to make it uh, horizontal. Yeah. It's interesting, but I was actually a little surprised I also, back in New York when I was younger, um, a friend of mine worked for a modular home company. So her home arrived at her house in four pieces. Yeah. You know, and I, I've i seen houses that are, you know, eight pieces put together. And it is kind of fascinating the way those work. But after um, doing the Unity tour, I was a little surprised. I was like, why aren't there more? I mean, 20 years ago, a, a prefab manufacturing might have been one thing with um i bet you with it's zoning and regulations well, no, i think well but they, they they meet all the zoning so I, I just it just surprises me that there's not more companies that are prefabbing parts of homes i i mean because I, of cnc technology and everything because that's what a lot of this is it's all like a you have, know have you seen the ones where they drop it and that it's hydraulics that like break the rooms right. i mean there's some really cool yeah. stuff so out there. It, it was interesting i was just actually kind of surprised that there wasn't more available well it's also like how it's, you... it's really really expensive i mean the tech the, the so there there are twenty three thousand homes that need to be built in that's new hampshire what they say. just they to make up the the, the gap. And I was like, is that for the free staters? Yeah. Well, I mean, when they say 23, I read that there's 23,000 some odd homes needed. And I, mean, I was like, are there really? I'm still in this whole, like, is there really? I, I think there you probably is. Because, I mean, there are a lot of people who I know who no, are trying to move who cannot I mean, buy homes. But, yes, I know. I just, it is a struggle. It's, a, it's one of these strange balances that I have a hard time balancing um i don't want i i'm i and you I know like how them. how in the olden days we solved this is property rights where you owned your house yep. and you could if you wanted to put a she shed yep. in the back you and did. help a homeless person yep. live there you could do it yep. and exchange money yep. uh, or services Carrot. or you can clean my yard right. and i will feed you or whatever. whatever remember private charity that's when we had yep. less poor people hmm. yeah no there is a lot um it'll be interesting to see what happens with the um adus and nanny homes and so, all that stuff yep. um because i have all these weird terms because they come from south africa just you know, to okay. be like they're called granny, I, nanny homes granny homes we call them granny flats yeah. granny flats yeah you know i mean it is true i can remember as a child my old one of excuse me one of my older brothers first apartment was upstairs from a garage yeah that, the, my, and we didn't think anything of it and i'm there i mean obviously, oh my God, I when lou and i got married we lived in a thatched um 
like a granny flat at the back of like a really fancy property yeah. and it was just like a little two bedroom but we could use their pool yeah. and you know and we were like great we don't have any money we both have student loans yep. to pay off like we're just getting started in life and it was perfect you know yeah and, and then we regulate those things out we yeah. make it so and sometimes uh, yeah 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 mm. All right, well, were we really going to talk about today? No, I don't know, because I wasn't really prepared. So we've got good, that was good that Chrissy won. Um, I think it kind of was maybe a little bit of a referendum on the tax cap, because she was at outwardly. I really like that she had that on her yeah, signs. It I meant a lot that to was, her. Uh, she mentioned it numerous times last night. Um, Maxine was very vague about, yeah, they, when, you, when people skirt their answers, you usually should send up a red flag, because you should be able to give a direct answer. And you don't have to agree with everybody but if you don't have a direct answer it usually means they have something that they don't want you to know um so good for you good for you chrissy uh there's not real i tried to do a quick search to see if anything exciting was happening this mm -hmm. weekend not really it's mother's day so there's brunches and things like that um dan and i took a great walk on the like auburn side southern part of uh, massabesic last weekend that was really nice i would do that again oh where the audubon is no we, we almost got to the audubon from the oh, other side okay because we we actually go if you go past the audubon mm -hmm. You, it dead ends, yep. and you can park there, and there's a really nice trail that goes that way that goes all way, the way to, so the, we were, to the lake and back. It's probably a good three so miles. So we might have been on, like, what was going to meet up with that. We could have kept going, but, you know, at some point, <laughs> I, smart people, you have to remember that when you turn around, you still have to go the whole way back. Right, and sometimes if you don't know where you're going, you don't know well, when can, you should be right, turning around. I kept around. saying that to Dan. I was like, I'm pretty sure we're almost, like, I get... That's the Audubon, I and we were arguing about it. And then he was like, we looked it up, and he's like, so should we just walk to the Audubon and Uber back to the car? And I was like, how about we just turn around and go back to the car? So there's lots of great places. Get out, take a walk. Um, We're going to try to hit. We're camping this weekend, but I want to go to Cedar Swamp in the next couple of weeks. Um, we didn't get there last year. Um, I think there's some litter pickups. Yeah, We've there got are. some gardening to do. Yep. Louie and I just went into the community garden on the park side. That was really, really f nice because we went maybe two nights ago. Uh, it was windy, so there weren't that many bugs because uh, yeah. I'm not sure if this is a zit or a bite, Probably but a either bite. way, <laughs> you know, downside of this hairstyle. But um, we put in all our, you know, stuff in our bedding. I met the lady who runs it. Uh, it was super cool. And then all these people who are walking their dogs at 630, they just got yeah. back from work. We're like, oh, what's this? How can I get involved? What can I do? Yeah, more community so stuff So I better. think that's great. Just getting out there and talking to your neighbors is how we're going to solve half the problems we have. True. Very true. Okay, they're cutting us off. We got a minute. So, um... <laughs> If you have any upcoming events for the summer months that you want us to mention on the show, you can always email those to us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Gladly mention things. Um, always looking for fun things that are going on in the city that people might not know about. Since I forgot to do this for the last two months, uh, if you haven't already bought my book check, or not, check, check out, out check out The Ecstatic Pessimist. You can find it on Amazon. And if you've read it and you watch it and you liked it, please leave me a review. Yep. Awesome. That's all we got. We'll be back next week. Enjoy the weather. Bye, guys. Bye.